If it wasn't clear before, uh, the, the ruling yesterday is highlighting the importance of having good judges on the bench. I mean, uh, yesterday the, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals blocked President Biden's mandate that federal employees have to get the COVID shot. It's a great step in the right direction. The court soundly rejected the administration's claim that the president has the authority to be the CEO of America. I mean, come on. Uh, but we, we had a good ruling yesterday, so that's encouraging. And I want us to, uh, to, to dive further into this. And it's, it's a, a good step in the right direction. So d joining me now to discuss this and more is Mike Berry. He's the vice president of external affairs and the senior counsel at First Liberty Institute. Mike, welcome back to the program. Always great to have you. Thanks for having me. It's great to be back on. Well, listen, let's start with the decision yesterday. Explain yesterday's ruling uh, to our viewers and listeners. Well, the decision was in the uh, Feds for Medical Freedom. So this is a group of, of federal employees who have an objection to the vaccine mandate, the Biden administration's vaccine mandate, requiring that all federal employees and contractors be vaccinated or else they would lose their job. And uh, they challenged that in federal court. You talked about the importance of having good judges. They got a good judge uh, in, here in Texas, in the Southern District of Texas, a judge by the name of Jeff Brown, who ruled in favor of these employees who objected to the mandate. And of course, the Biden administration appealed that to the Fifth Circuit. And that's what happened yesterday was uh, a little while back, a panel of the Fifth Circuit, so three judges ruled in favor of the administration and what happened yesterday was you had what's called an en banc ruling, which is the entire court, the entire Fifth Circuit uh, ruled. And that doesn't happen all that often. So when it does, it makes headlines. And they ruled in favor of the medical employees. And the, really the question before the court was whether or not the court would even have jurisdiction uh, to, to hear a challenge to the president's authority. So that's really the bigger issue here is does the president of the United States have authority to say, do this or else I'm going to fire you. And the Fifth Circuit said, uh, yes, of course the courts have authority to hear that case. Wow. Well, listen, this is encouraging. I'm loving what you're saying. Uh, now, on a practical level, this really doesn't change anything for federal employees, as I understand it. It's upholding a uh, preliminary in <coughs> injunction. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, you know, at a practical level, this isn't going to change a whole lot. But, but, you know, the statement this, made is huge. Right. This is the type of case that, that lawyers and policy wonks get really interested in because you get an opportunity to see uh, where some of these federal judges are. So the judge who wrote the opinion on behalf of the, the, the court, the Fifth Circuit, was Judge Andy Oldham, a, a Trump appointee. But then there was a very interesting and powerful concurrence written by another Trump appointed judge, Judge James Ho, uh, also on the Fifth Circuit. And Judge Ho took the opportunity to really go out, I, I would characterize as going after the deep state, right? And saying that uh, our country is essentially, our federal government has become uh, this place where as soon as you have a federal job, you essentially, uh, you ha almost have more power than the president because the president will be there and gone in four years or maybe eight years. But a federal employee who has federal protected civil service, they essentially have life tenure and they are, they're the ones that are controlling the government. And so, you know, he really took the opportunity to kind of go after the deep state in that regard and said, what's happened to our country to where a president, right, uh, it, it, under federal civil service laws, no longer has the authority to decide uh, who presidential appointed employees are going to be and, or, or not. Uh, so I encourage folks to, to read the opinion in its entirety, including the concurrence by Judge Ho. And again, at the practical level, this doesn't change a whole lot. It continues. It does deal yet another blow to the Biden administration's vaccine mandate, though, which is good news. Absolutely. Well, you're hitting on a, 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 a bigger issue here. The implications, if you will, of, of the of the broader problem that we have here, and that being a president who sees himself, an administration who view themselves as the CEOs of our country able to come in and virtually legislate 
themselves right out of the uh, from the executive branch of our government. This is a separation of powers issue that our Constitution is very clear about. And the decision yesterday seems to not just deal specifically with the VAX mandate, but goes to this broader issue of separation and powers. Isn't that really what what's happening here? Yeah, absolutely. You know, famously, I think we all, well, at least at one time when we still taught American history and, and, and civics in school, uh, we learned that President Washington, uh, they wanted to make him King Washington, and he rejected that, right, and said America is not going to have a king like Great Britain. In fact, that's what we, you know, had to fight to escape from. I suspect that if President Biden were given the opportunity to be, to be named an anointed King Biden, he would absolutely grab that opportunity to do so. And, and just as you said, we have this this separation of powers, Jody, for a reason. That's what the founders created our Constitution to do, which is to hold the president accountable. And here we have President Biden essentially telling a federal court, you don't have jurisdiction to review my actions or my decisions. I get to make those by executive fiat. And thank goodness we have good federal judges like those on the Fifth Circuit who said, no, we've got jurisdiction and we're going to hold you accountable, President Biden. Thank goodness, indeed. We've got about 30 seconds, uh, so we've got to wrap up here. But this whole COVID emergency thing is supposed to end on May 11th. So May 11th, does this go away or is this just going to be, go away until the next time? What's your thoughts? I thought it was supposed to go away after two weeks, Jody, but uh, here we are, <laughs> Good uh, you know, two years and change into it. Uh, I, I, I do think that heading into the uh, election season, uh, I think that has a funny way of changing the political landscape in the country. So I suspect we will see uh, the COVID so-called emergency ending in the very near future. My Barry, always great to have you on Washington Watch. Thank you for the, leading the charge on so many fronts. Thank you for having me.